Look. Have mercy on me. Have Everybody mercy and welcome to this week's episode of On the Bluff. I'm your host, Christian Fowler. Joining me as always, my co-host, Gabe Kuhn. Gabe, is this our Christmas edition episode? This I guess will it has be, to be because next week we're out of the office. Because it is Christmas next yes. Monday. Yes, Christmas. Have you done your shopping? Most of it. I've done my shopping for you. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't buy that. I, I have. He did? Did you? <laughs> yeah, I have it with me. You want it on air like, do right you want now? It? Do yeah, you, yeah. Do you want, you want do the it. gift? It's a, it's a Christmas. Me, I, me hey, and, Kenny will run it in here. You don't have to go get no, it. No, 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 no. Oh, you got it. You got it. Hey, hey, Gabe, real quick. Can we, do we need to get some direction? Like, don't show... Don't turn it around towards the camera. I mean, it's up to you, Kenny. It's not safe for work. Oh, it's raunchy? Can we not turn it to the camera? Do you think people would not appreciate that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let me see it, and then I'll decide. <laughs> yeah. All right, you so me and Taylor, this is a brain trust gift okay. that we uh, that we decided, and we'll we let figured Christian you'd decide. enjoy it. Um, we didn't get you what you need to complete the gift, okay. but I'm sure you have some at home, something you can, you oh, can absolutely. use to. It's a coloring book, but here you go. Why would you tell me before? Merry Why Christmas. would you tell them? Merry Christmas, buddy. That's a douche move. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Merry oh, Christmas, You can buddy. see it on the back. Oh, <laughs> hide it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to blur that out, Kenny. Yep. Can you at least say what it's I called? Will, can will, we say I, what it's called yeah, on the yeah, box? Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, this is so fitting. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with the top right corner. It says a very adult coloring book. It yes, is. it is. It sure is. And the name of the coloring book is, oh, and it's created and illustrated by Heather Land. So big, shout out Heather. Big shout out Heather Land on, uh, on her artwork because it is graphic. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the coloring book is, is The Big Adventures of Tiny Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the subtitle, the subheading is You Don't Have to Be Big. To do great things. Hey, hey, the round of applause. And hey, buddy, listen, I thought it was very fitting for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it because was. you don't have to be big to do great things. You don't. Hey, the, open open it up and look at some of the pictures. I, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give the listeners and viewers an imagery of what is on the front page. There are a lot of clouds. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of stars. There is a rainbow in the background. Yes. Riding that rainbow. <laughs> Is a is is, pink, is 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 is, is he a, has a name. He has a name. It's a no. His I'm name is is Tiny Dick. No 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 no. The unicorn. There is a oh, okay okay. There is okay. a okay, pink sorry. and purple unicorn. Yes, and on top of the unicorn being ridden by Tiny Dick himself. Tiny himself. Dick himself. <laughs> yes. I'm very interested to see uh, what these this, look like. I I mean this reminds me of, you know the I mean super bad. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah yeah yeah. Jonah Hill's character. Yeah. He was obsessed with drawing. Yeah, this is pretty much it. <laughs> Tiny Dick in the dinosaur land. Tiny Dick in a monster truck. <laughs> Tiny Dick fighting a dragon. <laughs> um what else we got? <laughs> that, I mean, fighting a dragon that is true David Goliath. That is yeah. true right David and Goliath uh, type stuff. Tiny Dick <laughs> is snorkeling. Mm-hmm. Snorkeling. How does he breathe? Tiny Dick on top of Mount Everest. Oh, Plan see. planting a flag that says T D on it. <laughs> Tiny dick on the moon with also with a flag that says T D on it. Well, listen, buddy. Um, Tiny dick at Mer a carnival. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Tiny to you and yours. Um, Tiny dick camping. <laughs> I can't believe you missed an opportunity. It says this book belongs to I was you gonna you're, but that, that see that wouldn't hit the same. You're supposed to sign it yourself. Well, Merry Christmas, buddy. I don't know what to do. Merry Christmas. You can just sort of... There you go. <laughs> you got to shake my hand yeah. on it? Okay. Merry to, Christmas to you. I'm trying to cover up. Just throw it off to the side. Just <laughs> literally... Here. Let me let me see it. Let me see it. Yeah. Just toss it. Toss it to the right. That hey, is. Kenny, you may have to, uh, you know, blank out or like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The be, back be, of the book. Be cognizant. Oh, yeah, 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 This podcast. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, buddy. You're I appreciate welcome. that. You're welcome. I didn't know that we were doing gifts, or I'm sure I could have come up with something equally as terrible for you. Yes, but Merry Christmas Merry to Christmas. you. Merry oh, Christmas. And by the way, you call those dirty Santa gifts, right? Yeah. Taylor called it some, I mean, white white, white elephant? elephant. White yeah. elephant, yep. I, see, it, it, it kind of pissed me off her calling it a white <laughs> elephant gift. I don't know why. 
I don't know why. Because white elephant is that is that always is that just for know. year round? You'd call that a white elephant gift if you're getting them something I get, I guess. raunchy and weird. I've heard it before. Dirty Santa way better. Dirty Santa. I mean, I don't know. That's what I knew it as. Well, that was surprising. I did not know that was coming. I'm full of surprises. Buddy. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for understanding my circumstances in life <laughs> and that it doesn't hold me down and has not stopped me yet and it will not stop me in my future. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad I could uh I could be of assistance. Yeah, no, that is uh that is it a is. confidence boost. Seeing the things that he can do really brings me confidence. Seriously myself. though. Yeah. Small and mighty. Small and mighty. Yep. <laughs> All right, move, moves a hundred miles an hour, buddy. <laughs> You know, what, you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say. All right, enough of this. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> I had a Christmas party to go to that attend this weekend. That's yeah. it. That's it. It was a good time. It. it was a good time. Uh, me and Anna Ruth were in Sparta, Tennessee this weekend on vacation. And it Love was hiking? Impeccable. Yeah, hiking, a lot of food. Uh, we went down to Lake Gunnersville, Alabama on Saturday night to watch her friends Lily and Tate. We're not. We didn't watch them get engaged, but we celebrated their engagement, their engagement party, uh, which was really nice as well. So yeah, it was a great weekend. Nice, wonderful time. Good to hear. Sparta, getting, Tennessee. You would suggest it? Absolutely. Like yeah. if you like being outdoors, you like hiking and stuff like that. It it is perfect. It's a small little town, like five thousand people. Just say like an Airbnb or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Airbnb. Um, the food, all the food there was really good. The parks are within you know twenty minutes to an hour, depending on which state park you go to. Ton of state parks in that area. Beautiful waterfalls. Excuse me, sorry. Um, beautiful waterfalls. Beautiful scenery. Beautiful woman. Um, oh yeah, God, that's oh. that's the important thing. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was it was top tier vacation. Easily, probably my favorite ever. Really? Whoa. Yeah, dude. It was. Really? We had a, we had. It was a good like time. that. We had a good time. Good to hear. Uh, it's, this is the first time. This is the first time I went on vacation and came home and not said. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm I'm glad to be home. And that's yeah. a, that's what I I was like. Yep, this is. That's honestly, yeah. That's a that's when you know it's good. That's that was that was good. that was me on my uh, on my honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly. I was like, I do not want to go home at all. And I'm I'm one that enjoys being, being home back and, in your bed. Yeah, chill, yeah. yeah. And I was like, nah, I definitely could have stayed a lot longer than that. So a lot of fun. I hear you. Good weekend. Definitely recommend it. I'm glad to hear it. Some other things happened this weekend on both sides, both football and basketball for the University well, of Memphis. True. Where do we start? Where do you want to start at? Yeah, oh, where do we? Where else do we start? <laughs> How about the eight and two team that finally got the nod in the AP top twenty five? Yeah, yeah that's Tigers a good, beat that's a Clemson seventy nine seventy seven. And quite frankly, I, I think what really carried the day, and we'll talk about the game. It was really nice to see FedEx Forum live up like that. Right. It was a wide out, and the first two decks were completely full. I think, I mean, if I'm estimating, probably fifteen five to 16,000 in there. Um, you have Brad Brownell from Clemson saying that rivals anything he sees in the ACC. To see those guys after such a rough and tumble out of conference schedule on the road or neutral side in the Bahamas, to see them come home to a team that was in the top 15 – beat them in front of the home crowd, in front of that environment, that was nice to see because they have not had a home game like that this year. Right. I want to talk I want to talk about really like the last, what, two or three weeks with this team and kind of the – I don't want to call it roller coaster. We've used roller coaster a lot with University of Memphis basketball team. It's less of a roller coaster. It's less though. of a roller coaster, but it eh, kind of is. kind of is at the same time because the expectations were so high, at least internally in this area, and it started out so good. And then you get the loss to Villanova, which was a tough loss. Back it a, up. Embarrassing loss. With and then Ole you Miss lose loss. to Ole Miss. And and I, honestly, like I, I don't think the panic meter was crazy at that point because we knew. But it, we, we knew what this, you know, how long of a season is. But at the same time, it's like if this team is gonna be different, they're not showing it. And what have they done since then? They beat VCU in a really, really tightly contested overtime game. They beat number twenty one at the time, Texas A and M, and then they beat on number, the road on the, the on the road, true road game, and then they beat number thirteen, Clemson, at home. Like this team responded to adversity extremely well. They are clearly I don't even know if you say headed in the right direction. They are in the right direction, yes. right? Like they are there. They are where they need to be. The way that we talked about this as well, Javon Quinterly and David Jones are the 
keys to this team. David Jones played well offensively. Javon Quinterly is the straw that stirs the drink yep. for the University of Memphis basketball program. I think I mentioned that on the pod last week. Like, we yeah. can give David Jones all the credit in the world, but the guy who the head of the snake is, who handles the ball, who has the most important job on the floor is Javon Quinterly, and he, he's been doing it at a high level. That's yeah. why they're winning these ranked games. Yeah, and, and having an experienced por- point guard like him, that in that scenario, in that game against the top 15 team, when you've kind of made a statement, but you haven't fully stamped your claim yet, to have the game that he had, to have zero turnovers in that game against one of the best teams in the country and help lead Memphis to a win. Like, this this team is impressive. This team has every capability and every opportunity to do something really special that a University of Memphis basketball team hasn't done in, in quite some time. And the way that they're chomping through this out-of-conference schedule inspires a lot of confidence for later in the year. And inspires a lot of confidence for Tuesday night against Virginia, another top 25 team that and, they have to face. I mean, if I told you after 10 games through a majority of this out-of-conference schedule, they'd be 8-2 and two with three top 25 wins yeah. and six of their wins were going to be against Ken Palm top 100 teams. Right. You just said that is perfect scenario. That is literally best case scenario. For sure. To raise that seed line, to do everything you want to do, to accomplish what you want to accomplish come NCAA tournament time, that's what you needed. That was the bar yeah. that you wanted to reach. Yeah, and You didn't know if it was going to be possible. You had to see all these guys mesh. But um, I, I think we've learned something, too, through the early going here. I think there's people nationally who will always have questions about continuity with certain rosters, yes. whether it be Memphis or other rosters. But if that... If there's a lack of continuity, but you have three, four, five year guys coming in, they mesh. They yeah. tend to mesh early. They yeah. they know what's expected of them. Um, obviously, in certain situations, you have to leave some of the, you know, you know the the things you want to accomplish within yourself, like the me things for sure. Um, like Caleb Mills is probably like he's and Penny's talked about it. He's had to sacrifice a lot. He's mm-hmm. been a lead scorer, a guy who gets. A lot of shots, whether it was at Houston or whether it's at Florida State, he's had to go to the bench and be a bench scorer and, and you know, not get the not, same not, volume. not shoot as much with volume. Um, but he's accepting that role and moving along. You have to let those things um, sort of fall into place. But it does show that I don't know if continuity needs to be that big of, right. a, of a checklist item when you're talking about teams and the off seasons they have. Especially in this day and age when we're going right. to see less and less continuity. But Caleb Mills is a great example. Jaquan Walton is another great example. A guy that, you know, led Wichita State in scoring last year. And I know he's, you know, had his ups and downs this season. But I I just feel like he's one that's going to come around. And I don't think he played bad against Clemson over the weekend. He just he didn't shoot. No one shot the three. Right. No one shot the three. Well, I mean, between him and Caleb Mills, they were like 0 for 10 from three. But they still Jaquan had ended with 10, I think. Yeah, I think so. So, like, I mean, in the end of the day, he didn't play a bad game. He just didn't didn't shoot very well. And this is the most to me. This is the most cohesive and in sync team that Penny has had (laughs) in this point of a season by a landslide. Because we've, we've talked about it pretty much every year, especially over the last three years or so they don't hit their stride until conference play and you're seeing with this and I think a lot of it at least from the outside looking in and this is obviously skeptical but just from having knowledge on the game and seeing the way that things play out it took a long time for these previous teams to buy into their roles yes and I don't even know how skeptical that is because I know Penny has talked about that a lot with previous teams this team is sold out on the goal yes and the goal is to win a championship that is the goal they've sold out on it you've got really at all of your positions, guys that have bought in to do exactly what they need to. We've seen a reinvigorated Malcolm Dandridge who has played extremely man. well this year, especially with, with what's been happening because we don't know what's been happening behind closed doors, but you would imagine it's been at least a little rocky, at least a little tumultuous uh, with Jordan Brown leaving. I still found it kind of strange as the coaching staff is standing by the fact that it's like, oh, he's sick. We still we don't have an update. It's like, right. eh, but continue, right. my bad. So... Malcolm is is playing the best ball of his career in this you know short ten game stint in a time where if Memphis didn't have him, that's that, what I, they would be extremely shorthanded. Nick Jordan played a good game against right. Clemson over the weekend and has bought into his role and what he needs to do. And it begs the question of this team that has beat three top twenty five teams, that's beat two teams this year that at some point were ranked in the top twenty five that one of their two losses has come against one of the four undefeated teams in the country. 
What does this team look like when Naquan Tomlin comes on? Unbel- I, 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 it's hard to. I, here's the thing about Naquan Tomlin: like this is unprecedented turnaround, right? Yeah. To to commit to a team nine games into the season and then have that quick of a turnaround, you have to expect some a little bit of growing For pains. Sure. Him understanding a role, him trying to get involved the defensively, system. offensively, learn the system. We get that. But, I mean, once they start hitting stride, I don't think it takes that long to start yeah. understanding what's expected yeah, of you. You, you can't tell if, me he won't be in by February, especially, March. And, especially and if you're a guy like Naquan Tomlin who fits the system right. perfectly. You're up and down the floor. You run the floor really well. Uh, you Offensively, um, you, you, you can stretch out a little bit, take a mid-range shot. You get to the rim. Yep. You're comfortable doing those things. You rebound. You do the dirty work. You play good defense. You bring energy. It's just, you know... I think it's as seamless a fit as possible. If this was a different situation, maybe you'd have worries about, uh, you know, him him getting involved and figuring it out even by the end of the season. But I think he'll get he'll get going here in the next couple of weeks and be a vital piece yeah. going forward. And by the time we get to March, I have no concerns he'll about be, where he'll, he'll be. be in. Yeah, is this? Now I did hear this, and this was uh, Jeff Goodman on Field of Sixty Eight, and I, I I don't know how much this holds. Um, I think Naquan Tomlin has sort of a nagging ankle injury. It doesn't sound like it's going to hold him back by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. but it's something to monitor right. throughout the year. Is this the best University of Memphis yes. basketball team in 15 years? Oh. You thought I was going Penny, I, uh, Penny Hardaway era? I would say yes. I would say yes, too. And definitely in the Penny Hardaway. I thought you were mm, going Penny yeah. Hardaway. I don't know, man. I, I don't that, know. I mean, this, this is, that this is kind of tough. Four Kings team? That's kind of tough, though, Ooh. because I, I don't know, because I, I wonder about the upside of this particular team when we get to a tournament situation. Yeah. Because they've shown, like, I I know that people will sort of, this will be in one year, out the other. But they were playing tournament caliber teams in the Bahamas in a tournament style situation. And they won two games relatively easily moved right. on. And it was a top 20 team, uh, top 25 team in Arkansas. Like, I, I think that that type of experience is very helpful, especially neutral site. Understanding that, you know, if you lose, you're going to get a worse matchup, that type of thing. So, I, I don't know. I it's I a, think that's a wait and see. That's an incomplete. I think so. I, I that's agree. an incomplete. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning yes based on the way they have managed this yeah. out of conference schedule because this is nuts. Like think about it. Like I think Purdue's the only other team who has three quad one wins. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're yeah. right. Memphis and yeah. Purdue are the only ones. And, and, and Purdue's number one in the country. Yeah. So like I, I mean, I, even if you do that four Kings team that you're talking about, um, Kenny. Like, how would they have managed this out of conference schedule? Right. It's just hard. We I, just know, like hindsight being twenty twenty, they went to the elite eight. Right, right, right. Of course, I exactly. Get that. And th- so. and that's that's where it comes from. And I I totally get that. But it just I don't know. There's a different feeling for this team. Obviously, it's still early, which honestly plays into the. Favor but I of guess if you're to the point, yes. I, I think if if we're answering that question with any level of honesty like the fact that we're debating that that's what i was that say. sort of shows right. what, where this team what is the at. ceiling of yep. this team could potentially yep. be and it's exciting as hell don't yep. like don't hide your excitement if you're a memphis fan out there don't hide your excitement no. i know what you felt about the penny hardaway era and the reality and the expectations being two completely different things reality is exceeding expectations in my opinion based sure. on what i thought they were going where they were going to be through ten games for sure with the schedule they had in front of them. It's nuts. Yeah, the fact that you can even have an argument or debate on if this is the best team in the last fifteen years shows you all you need to know about what this team is. Um, any other basketball thoughts before? We yeah, move I, on? I got two questions for you. Um, back to to Javon real quick. Um, do you think that Javon is underrated by Memphis Tiger fans right now, based on? kind of hit what he does on the court how he conducts this team and people's perception of a point guard and Kendrick Davis last year I think there's like from a point scoring standpoint I think people need to understand and maybe this is sort of where the underrated I, I kind of agree with your sentiment here that's what I'm getting at but people need to understand Javon Quinterly is not the game to game scorer Kendrick Davis no was. that's not, not what all. he does but a lot of the things you can't see orchestrating offense, handling the ball, limiting turnovers, uh, getting everybody on the same page on both ends, that's the thing that you have to understand why he needs to be rated higher in your mind. That's the reason he needs to get a lot of credit for where this team is at is because all the things you can't see, he does. Yeah. No, Gabe nailed that. Kenny, what's your second question? I'll take that one. (laughs) That's it. That's exactly how I feel. 
I'm sorry to say this, Christian. I can't remember my second question. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you this. I, and and, and I, I meant to say this because you brought up Malcolm Dandridge. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't help but think back to this offseason. And I think, you know, especially with the, the gift of hindsight, he got treated pretty unfairly oh, yeah. by a lot of the fan base. Oh, yeah. And I think some apologies and at least some understanding of what he's provided this year is due because there's a lot of people saying this is fifth year. It's never worked out. He's always been oh, hurt. He can't play. But for spurts, why do we need him? We have Jordan Brown coming in. We have all the, we, we don't need Malcolm. Where the hell oh, would this gosh. team's yeah. front court be without Malcolm Dandridge? Like, seriously. Yeah. Like, so, in the end of the day – we would be talking about a team without a five with a glaring hole right. without Malcolm Dane. Do that, I still think they need more? Right. Yes, and they're getting Naquan Tomlin. But without Malcolm, with what has happened with Jordan Brown, this team would be in a horrible position. No, he's undoubtedly the un, unsung hero of this team. I think a sung hero. I think like I, I watch games and I'm like, good God. Thank well, God he is here. Let's when, go Clemson. when in the offseason, you were you were saying why I mean people were saying why why, why? bring him back? Why are What's we worried point? about Let's him? Let's get a clean point. break from that exactly. East, those East guys. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know, listen, Gabe, both of us were able to watch the game this weekend. Christian was out of town, obviously, so he didn't get a chance to see it yet. But that Malcolm was involved in the play of the game that the literally sealed the deal for the Tigers in that game. I think it was like a minute, minute and a half left in the game. And they, Clemson had the ball bringing it on the court. And Malcolm, they were switching on picks. And Malcolm got out. He knock away, switched onto the the point guard, guarded him out to like two steps behind the, in front of the half court line, got the ball away. The guy made the dude travel. He passed the yep. ball off, shifted off to the key, then came back down. They got it to PJ. Came back down, doubled PJ, knocked the ball loose, dive dove, dove on, on the ball, scooped it up, turnover, turnover, yeah. Memphis ball. <laughs> that was nuts. crazy. And I think the one earlier in the game where the ball got knocked away to about half court, yes. he tiptoed the sideline and then finished on the other yes. end. Well, he, like, didn't fin- well, he didn't, well, he didn't finish, finish Jalen. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's like how yeah. it, they got a finish on the other end. When in his career do you remember him making a play like that? It does show like the level of confidence he has and the role he's playing now exceeds what he's been able to do in the past. And it's actually and, helping and him. I think, and I think health, health plays a big health part, plays a big part of it. But I think this role he's in definitely – I do have wonder. Yes, the health is massive. I do have wonders. Like if he would have had this expanded role throughout his career, could he have given us these type of results yeah. in the past? And well, he, I and he so. had I mean, in injuries. Games. Injuries right. just played a big deal, man. Yeah, I like, so too. And, and truth be told, I saw him – first practice that I went and saw him at, um, when he came back after he announced that he was um, coming back to Memphis – Walked into the gym, and I saw him, and I was like, "This is the best shape I've ever seen Malcolm in." Like, it is it is wild to me. Like you that that first practice showed me what kind of level uh, Malcolm was on coming into this season, wanting to exercise the demons, if you will, from the last four years. Like he came in in the greatest shape he's been in, and he has just been like you, like both of y'all have said. If it weren't for Malcolm in this front court, they'd have trouble. They, they would be in trouble. massive they'd, trouble. They'd have Nick Jordan, bro. Right, that's, that's it. That would be it. And that's it. Because and, let me tell you, man, PJ Hall is a dude. Yes, like that dude. Hey, can and ball. by the way, was he talking a lot of shit? How much shit was he talking? Because a I, gang, I, a gang of it, but really? it was awesome. But it was yes. awesome. And he's a stud. He's got good ball player. Yeah. But like, I was wondering about it, like the uh, barstool Memphis count doing the flipping off, flipping them off. I always think things like that are corny, personally. But. A little bit. It's just fandom. Fandom yeah. gets the best of people but sometimes. He, that that was just to kind of wrap up the Clemson talk. That was well, one of my favorite basketball games I've ever been to in my life. It was so much the, yes. the intensity and energy in that arena was unbelievable, and the the ball play was actually really really yes. good. I mean, the fact that like this the, uh, on that Clemson game, the fact that. They shot four for 26 from three. Right, and beat a top 15 team. Beat a top 15 team shooting four for 26 from three. Past Penny Hardaway coach teams would not be able to get over four no. for 26 from three and beat a number a top a number 13 team in the country. Right. 
and the fact that they only turned the ball over six times, it just shows like there's give and take to this team. They can win ball games in different, different ways. ways. Yeah, absolutely. And the defensive part of like people talked about how good this offense was going to be. This defense can roll. Yeah. They, defensively, this is this is one of the better teams in the country. Agreed. And I know the metrics won't necessarily tell you that. They may be what top thirty, top forty. Yeah. In in defensive metrics or like Ken Palm's adjusted defense. Right. But they're better than those metrics even tell you because they have length, athleticism, speed. They can run the floor. It's it's beautiful to watch. And then final thing I want to bring up, and this is overarching. I think this is without question, and we've talked about this, the deepest team Penny's had. But what it, like, game to game, seeing that bench compared to other benches For around sure. the country, like, there is just a noticeable difference. Mm-hmm. And even guys that we didn't necessarily, we didn't really know what the role was going to be, like Jalen Young. Right. Seven points, yeah, three very, for three from the well, field. Yeah. I think he had an assist. He was really good on the defensive end. Didn't make mistakes. Didn't turn the ball over. Um, Jaden Hardaway definitely plays his role in his own way. Jaquan Walton and Caleb Mills being bench, bench players, players is just completely different than most of the country has it. Yeah. So, like, this is just a noticeably deep team, and I think it makes a massive difference for outcomes game to game. For sure. All right, before we take a break, we're going to talk a little bit of Memphis football. Memphis landed a running back transfer that neither one of us expected. They were a finalist alongside USC and Oklahoma for South Carolina running back transfer Mario Anderson. And guess what? He committed to the University of Memphis. I feel like I'm Paul Rudd right now. Who'd have thunk it? Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. I didn't see that coming. No, we talked about it. Oklahoma and USC, and they got over top. And, And... I, listen, it doesn't surprise me that a running back recruit would want to come to Memphis. Right. But the fact that the other options were what they were kind of blows me yeah. away. And, and to me, I, and this is how I said it. Because la- the NIL money there is better. Facilities probably right. better. Your your access to a national championship certainly better. Did, did we talk about it on – I know we talked about it on the radio show last week. Did we talk about it here last week or had did that news I, I don't. I, I maybe, can't recall. I think maybe we did I think it in we passing. Did. I think we did. But the fact the fact of the matter is, and this was my point on it, he has a better chance to make it to the NFL from the University of Memphis than he does at USC and Oklahoma. Because you go to USC or Oklahoma, you're you can carries. easily get lost in the shuffle or split carries. Basically, at best, you're going to split carries. Worse, you get lost in the shuffle, you have to transfer somewhere else. You come to Memphis, who has a pedigree of putting running backs in the NFL – who plays in a lesser conference where you will be one of the better players in the conference right off the roof. And ran. you're competing for conference championships, so you'll right. get the time today. You'll get the ESPN2, right. ESPN the, the games. Time. Yeah. yeah, and this is a player that ran for 700 yards in the SEC last year on a team with one of the one of the worst offensive lines in the SEC. Right. South Carolina's offensive line was terrible. Uh, a D2 transfer guy who came in, made a name for himself in South Carolina, and some people may look at it as he's dropping a level coming from the SEC to the American, up. he could have gone up. But I, I just believe that this is a guy that could have been, you know, maybe a day three pick if he stayed at South Carolina or went to one of these other schools. And playing at a school like Memphis, and I know metrics and testing play into this as well, but, like, he will have statistics that say a second to fourth round pick at yeah. Memphis more than likely. Yeah, I think um, ultimately, you know, looking back at it, the selling point's not – it wasn't as complicated as we were making it even when you're talking about USC and Oklahoma. Like, the selling point, it speaks for itself. Right. Compete for championships, uh, get all the carries, right? right? Um, And then play against competition that you feel like you can absolutely manhandle. Yeah. Um, And you still get decent NIL money, probably, if you're him. Uh, Facilities are now very solid. Solid, yeah. Yeah. like you're gonna be on national TV. There's still a pedigree. There's 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 a pe- but the pedigree part of it's probably the biggest thing. Like I saw his agency because he's got an agency for NIL funds and everything else. Maybe the same one he takes to the NFL if he ever goes that route. Um, but they put a post out saying future pro and had Kenny Gainwell and you know Darryl. Antonio Gibson and Daryl and all these guys behind him. Uh, Tony right behind him. Yeah. Like the, I, I, the selling point was. Brother, we know running backs, and we know what we can do in getting you to the next level. So come on, and that is a selling point. Not a lot of Group of Five schools have, brother. I'll tell you that right no, now, for sure. Because that's you, one of one. Yeah, you turn on an, an NFL game, one out of three games, you're probably seeing Memphis running back on. I mean, right here, right, right, yeah, now, right now. And I know this is Monday. We record on Monday. 
you know, you can you know that, and it comes out right. Tuesday at noon. We're watching Kenny Gainwell play for the Eagles right, right this second. Right. Tony Pollard starting running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Daryl has been uh, in and out. Which is it's kind of a it's weird, weird thing that it's no weird. one else signs him except for the Rams. Right. Like and the, he's been extremely productive with the But when regardless. He's Antonio Gibson uh yeah. played a starting role this week for the commanders with Brian Robinson being out. Patrick Taylor had an expanded role with the Packers with AJ Dillon being out. Like there are Memphis running backs all over the place. Yeah, no, the selling point is actually a lot easier than we made it last Absolutely. week. I'll just say that. Absolutely. Um but I, I think it's really cool. And I if if you're wondering what to expect from Mario Anderson Jr., it's pretty simple. It's not a guy who's gonna wow you with speed, but he'll wow you with his vision and he gets tough yards. Right. I will tell you that right now. He you're not. There's not one guy in the country who can who can uh, arm tackle this guy. No, no, he is a thumper. He will run directly through your arms, and then like it's it's rare that one guy can take him down in general. For sure. And he was playing in the SEC last year, right. and 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 you know if if you <laughs> listen to South Carolina fans who are probably annoyed with him getting in the transfer portal, so you know it should be in one ear out the other. But they'll say, well, he doesn't have breakaway speed and he's slow. Broke off a 75 yarder against Tennessee. He's got he's got enough. Right. And and when it comes to vision and open space, he can go make things happen. He can make guys miss. So I I don't really have a negative thing to say about him. Um, maybe the pass catching maybe needs to be a little bit more if we're coming off Blake Watson with how much he provided right. to the pass game. But he caught 22 balls last year. I think they could and find a role you, there as that's well. That's what you got Sutton Smith for. Yep. <laughs> that's what he's here for. Yes. So, I, I mean, unbelievable pickup yeah. in the portal. And quite frankly, they've done really good on the D-line as well. Um They've, they've got some commits there. Got a punter. So you're just sort of looking maybe another guy in the wide receiver room yep. and then go hammer out O-line. That's, yes. that's going to be the yep. most important thing going into next Get year. Get your offensive line. Get that up. O-line right so Mario Anderson Jr. has somebody to, go, to, run, to run behind. On. Yeah. So, so our, does this mean that y'all are certain that Rock Taylor is staying like he is staying. Uh, see, I mean, that's never you can't, certain. You, you can't, can't ever be certain because McKylan Pounders just committed to Mississippi State, and he had a week worth of content saying Memphis, 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 Memphis. Right. And where we go, nothing but Memphis. Yeah. And he just kept posting these things, and then he ends up at Mississippi State. Right. We had the Caden Prescorn thing last year, but Rock Taylor has said he's unfinished business right. with the three. Well, yeah. He posted all those things on socials, so it's like. You know, but you, uh, know, he's, you he's, never know. He's saying the right things, and he's never saying he's going to stay. But who knows if some unreasonable offer comes in the spring? And he you just never know. But ship. you know, it, it feels but, like to me that they would be targeting more on the well. They, some I of the mean, playmakers. They, th they think I, that he's coming back. So I, I mean, feel it makes pretty sense. damn confident. Yeah, I do too. That he is coming back right now. Right now, <laughs> as of today. As of today, I feel like that's one of those. Though, if Rock does decide to leave, I, I'll. It'll be one that's very unexpected. Yeah, very unexpected and a huge loss. It's, it's Caden Prescott. It would be like Caden Prescott. It, yeah, very similar. Um, so, Gabe, we might have cl made the uh, selling point for Mario Anderson a little cloudy last week. There is one thing though, one selling point. I know, hundred percent, without okay. a shadow of a doubt, we will never be cloudy on. You don't even have to try to sell me on this. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that. The man behind the camera, Kenny Stubblefield, is going to cook up something fire for the hot three. No doubt. So, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back on the other side with hot three. Do you think if you spot an NBA team 30 points, they would still come back and win? Against who? A college team. A good college team. Yes. 30 points. You think they can come back and... What if I said 40 points? What is the breaking point? What are you saying? That the, the NBA team is down 30 points? Yeah, they're basically negative 40 at the start of the game. Negative 30, negative 40. I don't know, TJ. This is like, what team? Who's on it? Are we talking like that. the national championship team? Like and, UConn last year versus... No, let's say... Uh, Let's just use Villanova because that's who we played versus the Pistons. You think they come back and win that? I mean, we went on a 24 to nothing run. They yeah. were letting you make that run. What are you saying? 30 point? Yeah. 30 to nothing to start the game, Villanova? Yeah. I think the Pistons can probably win. You think so? Yeah. It's a lot of points. I know it's a lot. I don't know. It was just a dumb conversation. It's also an NBA team. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. This 
because I, I think everyone is saying that Jaws the best player we ever had. Correct. Are we ready to put Bane? Where are we putting Bane in? So I think that he is a top three offensive player mm -hmm. ever in the franchise. Right. Easy. And the reason I give him top three is because Zebo was a bad dude mm -hmm. offensively, like everything. I, he was one of my favorite Grizzlies ever. It might be my favorite Grizzly. Yeah. Bane is right there with him now already. Yeah. If, if, but if you're putting an all-time Grizzly starting five, is mm -hmm. he your shooting guard or are you going Tony Allen? 100% I'm going Bane. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, Tony <laughs> Allen. Bro, I appreciate Tony Allen and what he did. 100%. But, but the whole Tony Allen run, like the, the, fan, the fan response to him and like the levels we put him in, I was like, I'm sorry, y'all love y'all, but I don't look at Tony the way y'all do. This is going to be terrible, and it's going to be slanderous, <laughs> but you're going to love it. Uh, he is a better defensive John Conchar. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop. Whoa. <laughs> nah. Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Discover a world of possibilities at Streetcars of Memphis. Revamp your ride with the ultimate auto transformation. From booming audio systems to eye-catching wheels, powerful lift kits to sleek drop kits, cutting edge LED lights and light bars, we've got it all. Unleash your style with confidence. Feel the next level of auto care at Streetcars of Memphis. Your dream ride is just a visit away. Visit us online at www.901scm.com and let the transformation begin. Oh, baby, we're back. Hello. We are. I have been cooking, boys. <laughs> Good to hear. And I am uh, ready for y'all to feast. Let's do okay. it. Okay. On my cookings. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, gotcha. hey this, this is, is the hot this is three. Where, this is where our audience retention rate yes. goes to 2%. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They click that X immediately. All you got to do is just look at the, anal the analytics on YouTube, and it's like, yeah, Sky, like it just <laughs> drops off the face of the earth right about now. Yeah, because they, they want to hear what weird stuff you have to say, and then they boop. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. All right, hey, this is the Hot 30 sponsored by Streetcars of Memphis, man. For this month, the month of December, it's coming to a close pretty quickly. Uh, use on use code on the bluff um, and receive a $55 regular oil change or $65 for full synthetic oil changes. That's a deal. Can't beat it. That's an oil change at cost, boys. Yeah, I wish I was due for an oil change right now. I know, right? You if can you be. Are, Why not? Go ahead. Go ahead and get it done. I mean, yeah. Take advantage of it, right? Get your there. car will thank you. Your car will get, thank you. Get in there early. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> that's what your car will say to you. Hope, Street cars of Memphis. Like I was going to say, he's got a truck. Oh, that's true. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> that's a little aggressive. Is that aggressive? <laughs> Sorry. If we kept the audience around, they're all gone They're now. gone now. Yeah, this is gone. zero. Uh, Street cars of Memphis, man. These guys are awesome. They're from the city of memphis man it's a it's a locally owned uh shop they can do anything and everything for you man they can just do the regular maintenance like what we're talking about with the oil changes they can also modify they can do all these different things to your car man put a sound system in it put that thing on on a lift they can do everything man put some awesome mud and tires on your your, your truck christian yep. they can do a lot uh check these guys out uh 901scom.com or call 901-323-3332 Use the code the code phrase on the bluff and get a oil change at cost. Link is in the description below. Check it out. Boom. You boys ready? Yes, Let's sir. It. Let's do it. Hot topic, hot three topic number one. Hot topic. Anybody ever shop at Hot Topic? Nope. No, no, no. 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 That's not the first topic. I All have right. I have definitely gone into a hot topic before though. Yeah. I used to I think it was so awesome when I walked in there. Did you like, did you and your buddies and I never like got involved with it? Did they have like a skateboarding face? No. No. Really? Not a, or is that know. is that more like my I mean we're the same age group, really. Yeah, why do you do that? I don't know, dude. You just it feels like you're a little, you know, younger. Like I'm you, two like, years younger than you. are a baby. I don't know. Like the generation there may be a little, you know, tag with generation. 
feels like a generation gap. It's not. It, does. it looks like a generation like gap. I look like I'm 37. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm about to be 44 in a couple of months, a couple of weeks, boys. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. All right. Topic number one. It's a big, big week in Memphis. Obviously, the Tigers are doing their thing Tuesday night against Virginia in Memphis. But the biggest story of them all, John Moran is back tonight. What are your guys' thoughts, man? Oh, my gosh. They need it bad. I, they do. So man. bad. I, uh, I'm just... Uh, it's a shock to the system, almost. It's not that I, like... It's not that I it, like, snuck up on me, because it feels like it's been forever. Right. But... It's just like, damn, he's really... We're about to see John Morant. We're going to see an entertaining basketball game yeah. tonight. Like, that's the shock I'm having. Yeah, that's it. Because there's going to be I've competent had, basketball. I've had to watch David Roddy and Jake LaRavia and Zaire Williams for far too long. Far too long. And I need so I need oh. John Morant to come back and be the 26, 6, and 8 guy that we know and love. Yeah, because and, we, we underestimated the hell <laughs> out of how bad this team was going to be without John Morant. Oh God! Uh, we, we, God, you we, ain't lying we, a bit. We didn't necessarily think it was going to be perfect, or we knew it wasn't going to be perfect. We didn't necessarily think it was going to be pretty, but it has been disastrous. It's dismal. Yeah, it's bad. so bad. It is bad. And, and I, you know, once I saw the the Stephen Adams news, then I really knew it was going to be bad. But I didn't think it'd be not this bad. six and eighteen, six and nineteen. Right. I mean, Thunder games going on right now. But uh, they're losing by sixteen. So six, six and, and nineteen. 19. Yeah. Um, so there's that. I didn't think it'd be this bad. No, um, I don't think anyone could have foresaw this. And this does sort of lead me to okay, Jow comes back. Let's talk about it. Five hundred team above five hundred. What? What? How about this? What do you mark as success? By the end of the year, John Moran back in the lineup. You get Luke Kennard back hopefully soon. Marcus Smart, there's been some positive updates on his front. What is success by the time you get to game 82? And I mean that for real. What What is success? Because I'll, I'll give you my opinion first. People want to talk about playing and playoffs and all that stuff. I'm not interested in it, quite frankly. I think if you play well enough, we could have those discussions as it goes along. But more so than anything, I want an entertaining Product. Competitive. Competitive <laughs> product. I want to see Ja Morant bring a little bit of juice back to this team. I want to see this team have a soul, have a culture yeah. that we haven't seen since midseason last right. year. I, and I think that's I, what I, I, think I that's mark it. is I, success. I think that's got to be the bar because you can't, at this point you can't say 500. There's seven games out of the 10 spot. Right, right. And so you can't, you can't even put those projections on it now or set that bar for this team and what they are right now you have to set that bar of at least let it look good again like at least <laughs> at least let the it's fan base it's kind of depressing yeah, like, it is. It is. in large part but i think getting that jolt of energy back in the home building winning some home games seeing john morant throw lobs seeing john morant challenge people at the rim that is almost all i'm right. looking for Just at get this some point energy because back. i think we've seen the worst of the possible worst yeah. already yeah it can only it, yeah, no, you're right. Can I you're, knock you're on wood? Right. I yeah, should right knock here. on wood, right but here. it's like it can only it can only get better from here. It, it, it You've seen the bottom. Yeah, because I, I recall in the off season when this news was announced that Ja was going to be suspended for 25 games. Do you remember what we set like our low bar at? For oh, what this dude, team would 500 do? was low yeah. bar, right? Well, our absolute like bare minimum, not scorched earth bar play in was, was 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 10 and 15. It was like, yeah, our, that's right. was like that's our right. absolute, well, that, yep. like, it can't right. get any worse than that. Yep. Like, that is the bare, like, that was bare minimum expectation. And really, we felt decent about 500 being a possibility or, you know, a game or two away from 500. But to be six and more than likely 19, we we didn't see that coming. Because 10 was our, yeah. like, we felt like we might have even been cheating them a little bit saying 10. And they're four under ten. Oh. But in the end of the day, like I'm, I'm treating this as a playoffs wise, and and these things could present themselves if they play great ball. They're probably going to have to win what sixty percent of the rest of their games to right. even be in this conversation. But I'm treating the playoffs as like complete lost season. Like yeah. you're not. Don't worry about that. Right. This isn't do. You're not because going you're ahead. you've already dug yourself way too big of a mm -hmm. hole to dig out of it. Would be John Morant doing miraculous MVP, MVP level, level. thing. Yeah, He's done sure. this before though. I get it, but uh, there's no Stephen Adams. He doesn't have that on ball screener. They still don't rebound very right. well. Bismack Biombo's your true five. Right. You're still dealing with a, a 
uh, sort of thin cupboard. And then also, like, you, you can't assume Ja's going to play every game the rest of the season. You can't right. assume that you're not going to have some type of injury that and could what, derail And you what at level some point. he's going to be at those first yeah. five to ten you got to be careful with it, too. Right. Like, you just have to understand some kind of what's Eddie. But in the end of the day, like, if I'm defining success for the rest of the season, it's entertainment value, it's getting the soul back into this team, have fun again. Great see, point. I want to see freaking smiles on their yeah. face. Great so point. Our guy Paris Sharkey wrote an amazing article today about this whole jock coming back, where the Grizzlies stand. And he's brought it up a few times on the Anthony Sane show. But one of the things that he discussed was in 2019, Ja missed the first 25 games of the year with a back injury. And they were set at six and 16, or no, the eight, what was it? Hold on, eight and 17 when they came, when he came back. They were well outside of the playoff uh, running. They went 22 for the next 32. They won 22 out of the next 32 games and were firmly in the eighth seed at yeah. the end of the year. Could that happen? I mean, nah, I mean, sh- could it? Yeah, yeah. It could, it I, th- I think I think Parrish, and, and I love Parrish, and it was great work that he did. I do think he's being on the positive side. I, yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah, I agree. For sure. Right. sure. Um, and again, like for me, and this is me personally, I know other people have different thoughts of success. Getting back into the play-in, showing that you're a serious team this year may mean something to people. And it would mean something to me if they're able to do that. But more so than anything, I just have seen a soulless team out there. Right. I've seen a team who doesn't know their direction. I've seen a team that is uncomfortable with the hand they've been dealt. Yeah. I need Ja to come back and invigorate these guys again. Yep. Whether they win or lose ball games, I just it's, it's want it to optics. be it's optics. good looking out there. Yep. yep. All right. And Kenny I think number, part of optics sorry? would be winning 60% well, of, course, of the rest of, of your course. game. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? absolutely. Like that, that would go a long way in optics. Yeah, definitely. But if you show that you get your soul back before the offseason and going into next year where Steven Adams, Brandon Clark you could feel be healthy, you should feel pretty damn good about where this team is at and where this, this franchise is at. Yep. I still think there's some moves to be made. For sure. Don't disagree with that. Yeah. And I... I Looks like Junior's going to be off the team here soon. Yep. And uh, I don't know what you do with Jake LaRavia and Zaire Williams. I have, uh, let's just say, I have not seen any positive strides from either of those guys. Nope. And I don't know what their future is That's in the National Basketball positive. Association. All Speaking right. of positive. <laughs> we'll go to topic number two now before topic. this goes way downhill. Topic number two, UFC 296 happened this weekend. We didn't get a chance to, to uh, preview it last week, but... Good card. It happened. Good card. Decent card. Um, Colby Covington was fighting for the belt against the champion Leon Edwards in the welterweight division. Um, that's yeah. That's that's it. That's where we're gonna. I think that's where we're gonna stop on this. I think we're gonna center around that. All right, go ahead. Because I think that's the biggest thing from this. This is where I want to go with it because Gabe talked about this pre-show, and I think it goes. I think there's two. I think there's two ways that we talk about this, and I think I agree sort of with both of them. Gabe, you tell me your thoughts on this. I feel like every time Leon Edwards has a title fight, there is about as good of a percentage chance that he can win as he could lose. That's been on one hand. Yes. On the other hand, this man has not gotten nearly enough credit for beating Kamara Usman twice and then handling Colby Covington on Saturday. Uh, Is it? Are we okay to have both of these opinions? Yes, I, I, I'm of the opinion. Like I look at at that fight on Saturday and going into it, I thought Colby Covington would win the thing. Did you really? Yeah, because I thought, okay, Mm. he can take him down, he can get him on the ground, he can bother him a little bit because Leon is not a great wrestler, and that could really be Colby's, you know, saving grace in this fight. And I don't, I didn't, and and this played out this way. I don't think Leon has the power in his hands to really scare anybody or to be yeah. the highlight maker that a lot of other fighters can be when they're a championship fighter. Uh, sure, the kick on Kamaru Usman was a highlight. Right. That was, there's plenty of power behind that. But Leon Edwards is not like a, a guy that's going to wow you with any one thing in he anything. does. Yep. But he is technical. He can strike. And he makes guys uncomfortable with his pace and the space and how he uses his uh, distance to his advantage. And I, I that played out perfectly with Colby. And the one thing we do need to give him credit for going forward, especially if you get another matchup like Colby, is his takedown defense, his defense is phenomenal. They did it against Kamar Usman, he, he was phenomenal. I think he had eight, uh, you know, Colby was, Colby was two for ten yeah. takedown-wise, and Leon was two for three. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, ultimately, 
Colby outstruck him in total strikes. Leon had way more significant strikes and, and at a way better rate. Um, so I, it was easily Leon's fight. And uh, I think he needs a lot more credit going forward. But I don't know if we're actually going to give it to him, yeah. right? Because no, it's just... I, it's, it's hard. It's it, isn't it kind of the first Kamaru fight, though? Isn't that sort of like... Kamaru owned that fight going the up to the fight. fifth round, and he got knocked out on what people thought was fluky. And I think from that point forward, the narrative was written. But then the second fight even comes though, around, and Leon owns right, him. Right. You know, even though and he dominated that fight, exactly. it, it was the lasting impression of the narrative it behind Hail, it. Took a hail mary yes. to win a title fight. He had to get lucky. And to I go think, win and, a fight. I, and I think it's unfortunate for Leon because Leon is a great fighter, but he's just not. He's not a ticket seller. No. Like even the even after the he's not loud. He's not obnoxious. No, he doesn't no. do he's all pretty, the he's selling pretty, of the fights. Yeah, he's pretty respectful. But like even with how big the headshot dead thing was, like how how big that was and how that was pretty awesome. It was all it was awesome. But it still didn't like <laughs> launch him into superstardom because he didn't t necessarily well, take that and run with it personality wise. Well, and because it, 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 it's not him, which I respect him it, for doing that. But it doesn't make him like. It doesn't make him a headliner. And did anyone think he was going to win the second fight? No, as I did. As soon as he knocked I him out, I, I, I told y'all he was going you to. You did. You did. You were one of like the very. Thank you're you. the only one I think that predicted that yeah. I did know I not, that predicted when I that Kamaru would lose. When I saw Kamaru talk before that fight, I was like, he's not confident. Yeah. He's trying no, to convince no, Ken, himself. No, Kenny was but see, it's more about Kamaru than it actually is about Leon. Leon, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like after that fight, after the first fight where he had the hail mary knockout with the with the with the kick. It, everybody said, okay, they're going to run this back. Kamru's going to win. Yeah. And he died. Like, everybody I mean, just completely, like, every every time we get a chance to write off Leon Edwards, we, we do. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I can't really do it going forward. Yeah. I can't. Because I, I think, again, and fighters talk about this all the time, you get the belt, you have newfound confidence. I think he's found that and he's ran with that. For sure. But he's not, He's he, to your point, he is not a ticket seller. Right? No. He stretched the imagination. No, definitely not. All right, two points I want to go with you all on this. Was the trash talk too far this week? Of course yeah, it was. Absolutely. It's Colby Covington. It's always too it's far. It's always too far. Talk, but, about, but a, talk for, about a dead parent. For, for those that don't know, um, before the fight, they did their presser, and Colby Covington talked about Leon Edwards' dad, um, who was not really in Leon's life. No. Um, who was in and out of incarceration, that type of thing. Um, but he said, I'm going to drag him into hell, and he's going to see his dad. And that's hey, – listen, I don't care – the transgressions in the past that's of nasty, someone's bro. parent that is disgusting yeah it's bad you yeah. just cannot do that no, it's too much. And, and but that's colby man that's he what will it, just yeah, continue he's to do that he's gonna go and as far as he can it, it's just it's frustrating because i think in the ufc a lot of these guys feel like they need to make a name by being a complete buffoon and yeah. that's a shame. That's, i mean that's part of the shame of the sport but it's also part of the reason that it is so right intriguing it's worked it's worked for him i mean he he's a name hey, but, but also i'm tired of him man he's the dallas cowboys of the ufc he's own three in title fights he can't, can't do anything that's my next question for y'all is Colby done? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop he's not giving him opportunities. He's, he's not getting back. He's not Stop he, giving him up. He's, he's a he, good fighter. Yeah. He's not. He's not active enough, and and he's just not going to be active. I make mean, a crap ton of money. Why would he fight three times a year to try to get back? But to the again, title? but and you've got you've got young up and comers and Shavkat Rachmanov. You've got Ian Gary. You've got all these. Uh, up and comers at welterweight. It just it, I don't see it happening for Colby. But, anymore. but we've we've also seen that. Dana will do anything to sell a damn ticket. For buddy. sure. And, hey. Colby, and Colby does that. I'm not going to say he's not going to headline a fight again. I, I think that is a possibility, but, but I, just don't, I don't fight. see it being a title fight. He said, Dana said after the fight in his uh, post-fight press conference, he said that after that pre-fight presser with Colby saying what he said, that the ticket sales for the pay-per-view went up 25%. Of course, of course they did. Of course they As did. A, Colby sells fights. Like you can, I'm not a, a Colby fan. Like he, Complete clown. He's a clown. But he sells tickets, and yes, he makes and that's, headlines. That's, that's why I, that's, I just, with Dana White and how the whole promotions run, that's why I don't count him out of right main event, he headlining, a, he headlining a card, maybe getting another championship fight if the if the matchup is correct. I, that's why I don't count it out. Controversy, because I know, controversy sells. Because I, I know Dana White and what he wants in the end of the day, and that's he wants that, those 25%, Money. that 25% that boost yeah, in pay-per-views. All right, Kenny, topic number three. All right, last topic, NFL. Uh, I want to go in this direction, then y'all can take it wherever you want to go. Let's go NFL MVP. No matter what betting service you look at, it feels like it changes every week. It does. And it's never the same. There's not a consistent consensus favorite out there. Oh, there is now. There what is, is now. the on-the-bluff consensus NFL MVP favorite? There's a consensus now for everybody, it's Brock, I think. It's, it's minus Purdy. 200 on FanDuel yep. right now for Brock Purdy because Dak Prescott did not have a good game. 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. You can make excuses for them, too. Oh, for uh, sure. Bad matchup, bad time, bad bills are weather. peaking. Bad, the whole thing, and then they had 10 guys that were – a lot Sick. of their offensive stomach players bug. had a stomach bug, yeah. and they were just not ready to play. No, it was a it was a recipe for the Cowboys yes. to have a it, bad. It really, game. I, I I knew it going into I did too. it. I just I knew, knew it. I knew as even before the stomach bug and stuff. I knew when Buffalo was favored by like three and a half off the rip. That I knew it. It was scary. I, I, and, and the Bills have been playing good, ball. really good ball. Yeah, and they're a scary team in the AFC. For sure. If you if you and I know they're outside of the the playoff picture right this second, but if but they get are, themselves they're, in, they're arguably the scariest team in the AFC right if now. You, if they get themselves in, I'd be careful. I think. Ravens, by definition, would be the scariest because I they're would rather one. I'd rather play Baltimore but if, than Buffalo. Yeah, okay, but I'm saying like when you're talking about a dark horse that you know can beat the right. best of the that best, is, of the that AFC, is that's Buffalo. the Bills. Yeah, for sure, that's the Bills. Um, but no, it's Brock Purdy, and I, I tried to lay it out this way. I think there's a couple of questions you need to ask yourself. One, and this is sort of to the negative of Brock Purdy, and I'm going to ask you this too. I know my answer. Is Brock Purdy the most valuable player in in the NFL? No. Is he the most valuable player in the NFL? No. So by definition of the award, I don't think he is either. Right. But that's not what the that's award is. That's not what anymore. the award has become. It's like the Heisman, the best quarterback on one of the best teams who has the best stats is going to win it. And Dak Prescott completely crapped the bed and it put Brock Purdy in the lead. He had four touchdowns, 240 yards passing. They smashed good the Cardinals. Efe- good efficiency. He scored 45 points, 45 to 29, I think was the yep. final score against the Cardinals. The other question is, has he done enough as far as story, success on the field of teams, success on the field personally, to merit winning the award? And I think that's an absolute yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. 29 TDs, 7 INTs, right. 11 and 3 team, best right. team in the NFL. Yeah. No, the best team in the league. He leads the league in passing touchdowns. And for as much as, and I'm on this side as well, but I can just, I, I get it at the same time. As much as we can nitpick, you know, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayu, yeah. Christian McCaffrey, great defense, great offensive line. And it's all true. Brock Purdy is balling. Like he is playing. He's playing the best ball in the league right now from the quarterback position. Even though even though there are so many caveats, right. if even though there are so many caveats to it and you know, you can make statistically, cases statistically he's playing the best ball without question. You watch the games and he's bowling. <laughs> you watch the games and it's still just like it's I get Oh, it. there's Brandon Ayuk. Well, oh, no, Chris yes, McCaffrey, 115 I, yard game. No, no, you're not uh, you're <laughs> not you're not wrong. But I, I, but who's but who's playing better ball right now? Dak has had his ups and downs this year. Uh, Lamar Jackson. Weirdly enough, though, here's the only thing I'd say about Brock in October, right? For, two, th- for three games. He had the three games. You didn't have Debo. You didn't have Trent. And he had more interceptions than touchdowns. Yes. But, and, that- but then here's the other counterpoint to where you give it back to Brock and say, okay, that, that's okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of guys lot out of there that. who would lose one of their right. best receivers, and there's they're there's, all pro left tackle no, there's struggle. No, there's no quarterbacks that have done this this year. Lamar has yes. been. Lamar, I, I know Lamar has gotten a lot of credit. He's been up and down. Lamar has yes. not. It, it, statistically, he has not been that He's impressive there, this year. Yeah. He's not been Jaylen impressive. Hurts. He didn't have the stats. Jalen Hurts has turned the ball Josh over Allen, a lot, and he's Patrick dropped Mahomes. games. Jo- yeah, it, no one is this. No, is it, there's no clear like this is the guy. No. And it has to be the guy, and this can change over the next three to four weeks. Right, like, but I don't. I don't see the 49ers. I don't see Brock Purdy having either. some like low either. point no, in no, the no. next three weeks. I don't either. And so I think I think it is his to lose right now. But say he were to go in that direction, you've got. Mahomes, who, I don't know, he could catch Dak, fire, but Dak I don't see could it. redeem himself. Dak could come back up the mountain. The Cowboys have big games against Miami and Detroit. Lamar could coming up. Lamar could have a crazy close to the year. Josh Allen is sneaking up there. But He's playing ball. Hard. He's got 37 touchdowns. Even if those guys have great weeks and the 49ers and Brock Purdy just cruise, I it's still a, think it's Brock. I do, too. I do, too. It, it could change. It, but, like, here's my thing about the Brock Purdy thing and the MVP thing. Is it that Brock Purdy is truly the MVP, or is it just an indictment of where we're at with quarterback play this year? Quarterback uh, play is down. It's down. It hasn't been as good this year. That's And that's what I'm saying. Like, Typically, it is so obvious. Relatively early in the season. Like, Patrick Mahomes last year, everybody, like, Mahomes was yeah. ball for the whole year. Like, it was, it was pretty unquestionable. If he cruised it and kept playing at a high level, he was going to win it. This year, there's been a lot of back and forth. but Jalen Hurts had his last year, too. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Jalen Hurts as well. But there just hasn't been anything like that this year. There hasn't been anyone that stands out head and shoulders above the rest. Like, you can say Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, like all these guys, Jalen Hurts, like all these guys 
or a game or two from having a bad game versus a good yeah. game from being at the top of that mountain to be, fifth yeah. or sixth. Like that's just where yes. the quarterback and plays it's been bouncing this year. around a lot. Um, I I I just it's just so strange for me because like on one hand I don't think he's even the most valuable player on his team. But he, Chris, he, I mean, it's Chris McCaffrey. It's Chris McCaffrey. I mean, he leads the league in rushing yards. He's got Second 20 in touchdowns. touchdowns. He's got 20 touchdowns altogether. Does he have 20? Receiving. Okay, yeah, so he's, he's got tied, seven he's, receiving and 13 rushing. He's tied rushing. with most, for he's, the most touchdowns. He's, he's, uh, he's the league leader in all-purpose yards. Mm-hmm. Like, I see him as the most more valuable player. But he's it's a quarterback, quarterback award. Yeah, he's and not I, quarterback. Like I, I think we need to revisit that conversation too. too in itself. I do too. I, I Derrick th- Henry probably should have won a couple years ago when he ran for two thousand. Right. But they were never going to give it to no. him. So like I just I, I don't know the award. I I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. I think it cheapens the award. It does. It no. It, it just, it, cheap, it just cheapens it. It like I mean you you brought it up. It's the same thing as the Heisman. It's the same thing as the Heisman. But I do want to give Brock. Purdy. I mean, this yeah, is, he gets this is, credit. Like, this is a guy. Uh, this is a guy that was the last pick in the NFL draft, and this isn't some distant, far story. Last year, <laughs> he was the last pick in the NFL draft, and now he is the front runner for MVP, and that plays a part into it as well. Yes. Just being the st- that is and, that is a that has never happened in the history of the league. There's never been someone to do what Brock Purdy has done. And I get all the caveats, and and I agree with them. That team is stacked. They are loaded. But Jimmy Garoppolo never had a season like that. Jimmy Garoppolo never had a season where he was competing well, for MVP. He well, didn't. He, he didn't did, have one he that did. he was not. He he had similar statistics. So very similar statistics. How, what's the most? I think there was Jimmy there was one point. Here? There was one point where he was like eleven and or oh gosh, I I, I don't want to screw but, this uh, up. But uh, regardless, statistically just, he was close. I think he had a little more interceptions. Right. He, he turned and the ball over touchdowns. a little bit more. But I, I'm just saying, like the story is incredible. Like that is a that's freaking wild. That yes. is some story. Book. 2019 is the year y'all are thinking out thinking about. He had uh, almost 4,000 yards throwing and 27 yards or 27 touchdowns. Okay, so like, See, like less, no, but, but it, less. Than, what, 11 TD or 11 INTs or more than that? Uh, 13. 13. So 13. Yeah. That's not an MVP year. Uh, no. Less than 4K, not even 13. But, like, but it's weird. Like, if you do a side by side, like, through 14 or 15 weeks it for both those seasons, it's very close. But Brock leads the league in touchdowns. No, but right? Brock, listen, I give, I give a lot of credit to I'm, Brock. We're, we're saying the same thing. We agree, I, I, we agree yes, with each other. I think, weirdly enough, no matter what people say <laughs> about this, I think everybody's on the same page that they don't think Brock Purdy like is the, the most like valuable the, player like in the, the yeah, NFL. But, uh, but, they, but they accept the fact that he's likely going to win the award. Right. It's it's yeah, but ah, uh, like yeah. you're, you're so st- it's conflicting. It's a very conflicting. And, and, but argument. then on the same token, you don't want to down him too much because it's like he's it's had a cr- awesome it's crazy. year. Yeah. But then again, like here's here's you know people will make the art. Well, he's not an elite quarterback. Can you win the MVP if you're not in the elite category? Yeah, you can. Matt Ryan won one. Rich Gannon won one. You can win the damn Cam NFL. I mean, Cam and, Newton, you can say. Cam, he was damn elite for that year, for that buddy. Year, for Holy that year, but God. I'm saying Cam before well, that was he had never. he sustained success. But he was never looked at as elite before that. You're talking <clears> about a guy that was throwing like 20 touchdowns and like 16 picks a year. Cam was not elite before he won MVP. Well, he had two He had two really good years. He had two really good years. But and one no, of them was no, MVP. But nobody was ever like Cam is elite. I get, I get what you mean, but I think Rich Gannon and Matt Ryan it's may different. be the better it's, it's, examples. It, I agree. Right? I agree. But you can Especially throw it in Rich there. Gannon. You can throw it in Rich Gannon, that was his only good that real was year. That was it. Yeah, you're right. He just hooped one year, and he and was, was never considered elite. No. And then he was done with that. Everybody yeah. had these high hopes for him going forward in his career, and he never reached yeah. those no, that's heights. A, you're right. There's a precedent. But, I, but also, here's the other thing. I am not ruling out the fact that I look up in three years and Brock Purdy is considered a top five quarterback in the NFL. No. I'm not ruling that I'm not out. E- I no, can't. I'm not either. I'm not, you he's can't. been unbelievable yeah, since can't. he's been in there. No, you can't. You and can't he's in the perfect out. system with the perfect players, with a perfect coach. With the young core. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like you I, can't ruin it out. At the end of the day, like, yeah, I don't think he's an elite quarterback now, but am I going to have to accept it here in the next couple yeah. of years? I think I might. Definitely on the table. All is right. there somebody? Is there somebody that could get the NFL MVP award that y'all would both be like, "Yep, that makes sense to me." Um, if the Bills won out, they, and they could Josh get Allen. Josh Allen, um, I'd accept Lamar Jackson. I would not. Stats wise, no, but I, I watch him play. I, I know, just, I know, but makes, sta- to me, he like, makes way too many things out of nothing. He does, and no, it's you're, at, you're absolutely right. But stat, to me, but stats, stats mean stats uh, are a big mean part something. of it. And Josh, for everything that the Bill has talked about, the Bills this year, the turnovers, yada, 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 Josh Allen has balled out this year. He's played good. I don't good care what anybody says. And 
Joe Brady is making himself a hell of a lot of money yeah. right now because he is way better at they, offense they coordinator did. than Ken Dorsey is. They just need to hire him full time. Yes, 100%. he doesn't need to go anywhere. Guess what else. he did? He started running the ball. Yes. And guess what Josh Allen started doing? Oh, and by Not the way, the guess who he started much. running the ball with? James, James Cook, Cook. Who just had 221 yards. Latavius Murray. Right. Like a clown. Yep. I don't get that. I've Not never all. understood no. that. All right. Let's wrap and this up. And by the way, no, it's kind okay, of funny. Real again. quick, real quick. Here we'll we wrap again. it up in a second. What's hilarious to me, Dak Prescott had a bad game. Not, yep. not discounting that. Josh Allen threw for 97 yards in that game. Yeah, right. no, one, no one's going to talk about that because they won 31 right. 10. But and he they ran for, for 300 yards. Threw for 90 yards. 94 yards. Yeah. <laughs> that's nuts. 94 yards and a touchdown. I think he had like 75 rushing yards and a touchdown. But still, too. that's nuts to me. It's different. That's wild. It's different. All right, we're going to wrap it up. We appreciate you guys for joining us this week. If you're watching on YouTube, you can like, subscribe, and comment. Also, new merch. New merch. Love yeah. City merchandise, right? Is that <laughs> what it is? BluffCityMerch.com, Bluff City baby. merch. Yes, yeah, sorry. Not eyes. Yeah. Bluff City merch. Yep, so it is com. still new, so go. Don't get, point it. You put me on the spot, I did, buddy. I, did. I know you did it to him again. <laughs> I did. I had to. Um, <laughs> you, you can make a good Christmas present out of it. I won't lie. Yeah, and you on the, And on the Bluff Pod t-shirt, it's a pretty good, pretty good Christmas present, if you ask me. Um, I, I mentioned YouTube. No Spotify. Just went straight to it. Didn't mention any podcast platforms. If you're listening there, you can like, subscribe, and comment there as well we appreciate you guys for joining us and we will see you back here in two weeks because next week is christmas so merry christmas we will see happy you guys holidays in two weeks. there you go thank you for listening to on the bluff if you enjoyed this episode leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts also like and subscribe to bluff city media's youtube page head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of memphis sports and how you can become an insider